Hello everybody and welcome to part 4. Uh, we're going to be doing something very important today and setting up a crucial piece of our game structure, which is our player state machine. Don't worry if you don't know what a state machine is or you've never heard that term before, it's a fairly straightforward concept. What we're going to do to set up and demonstrate that concept is create two states that our player can be in at any point in time. The first will be our free state, which is what the player is in now, actually, where they can uh, move around or they can be stood still. Okay, and that's basically it. And they can go from the free state to a number of other states. In this episode, uh, we're going to create the roll state that we can move to. Okay, so whenever the player presses um, the action button, uh, they enter a rolling state, and where they go into an animation, move a certain distance, and while they are doing that roll, while they are performing that roll, they will be executing um, a certain branch of code that they won't be executing while they're in the free state, where they'll be executing the code that lets them move around. It is an important code structure to be able to understand. It's what allows us to really do anything particularly complicated with the player character if we want them to be able to climb ladders, talk to people, um, use items and all manner of different things uh, without the code tying itself in knots because we're able to keep each one of those states nice and uh, distinct from one another. So in order to make our player roll, uh, the first thing we want to do is bring in the animation for that roll. So I'm going to press Alt S to make a new sprite. I'm going to call it S player roll. Uh, hit import and I believe it's called S player roll in here somewhere. S player roll underscore strip 24 is my sprite. Bring it in, uh, set the origin to be uh, bottom center or p position it yourself on the sprite. 8x 23y, I believe that's exactly the same as it is in S player. Yep, yeah, 823, just make sure it, it lines up however your own sprites and own artwork work, or if you're using mine, just use those numbers. The sprite itself is set up the same way all our sprites are, okay, the four directions in that same order. Um, this one's 24 frames long for me. Uh, the main thing to understand about how I'm doing the roll is that each uh, direction contains one complete roll. So you can see he starts in this kind of leaning down position, goes into a roll, and finishes about to return to the neutral position. Okay, and he does that again in each sort of uh, direction. Okay, um, the reason for that is, uh, well, the reason that that is important is because the way we're going to animate this is slightly different. Instead of relying on whatever our frames per second here is, this this is irrelevant to us. Uh, we want there to be one complete roll, no matter how long the roll itself is uh, in terms of physical distance. So that allows us to tweak and adjust that distance and adjust the speed of the roll without worrying about the animation not matching up. So we want it to contain one complete roll, no matter how long the roll itself is. So that if the roll is really long, it, he take, it, the animation will take longer because it'll be slower to fit it all in um, and if it's a really short roll he'll animate through it really quickly okay just to make sure that this uh, one complete roll fits um, into the act of rolling itself um, regardless of whatever numbers we set to match that okay and then that makes it easier for us to in, in general once we've determined the, the best kind of roll distance and speed for our gameplay to make the sprite and artwork itself fit, okay? So that's all for our sprite. Uh, the next thing we want to do is add a few new things to the player create event. Um, so we double click O player, uh, click the create event, we can maximize this if we want. We'll make that a little bit bigger too. So we wanna add, uh, first of all, our new rolling sprite. So down here with our other sprites, I can add sprite roll equals S player roll semicolon. And we want to add uh, the speed and distance of our roll. So just under speed walk, just so it's in the same place, I'll write speed uh, roll equals, we'll make it 3.0. Um, so it's, you know, one and a half times faster than uh, our walking speed. And the distance that we want to roll in pixels. Um, distance roll equals 52. Uh, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what the significance necessarily is of 52. That's like, I don't know, like five tiles or something like that, four tiles. 
Um, I don't know, that's just the number I ended up settling on in my pre-production of deciding, yes, this is the correct distance uh, for this role. You can experiment uh, and change it about and use whatever you want, you'll, you'll see as we go through. Okay, there is one more thing we need to add to the create event, but before we do it, I'm going to create two new scripts. So right click the scripts, I'm going to hit create script and call it player state free. Then I'm going to make another one and call it player state role. And what we're going to do is every game step at the moment, we're just running whatever is in our players uh, step event, right? We're running all this um, input stuff, then working out where we want to move and moving and adjusting our sprite and so on. What we're going to do is instead, when we come into our step event, determine what state we're currently in and run one of these scripts. And there'll be a bunch more. We'll add like a ton of different player state, uh, die, player state, uh, hook, player state, talk, and you know, all those different kinds of things as we go through the development of the game. But for now, we just have these two states and we want to, instead of doing one giant chunk of code in a step event, either do the stuff we kind of have here now in our player state free uh, or do uh, just a generic kind of move in one direction um, kind of script in player state roll for when we're rolling. So first of all with um, O player open go to your step event um, we'll maximize that as well and I'm just going to shrink this down just to make it clear so you can see it all at once. So this is our player's entire um, step event at the moment. What I want you to do is underneath input magnitude Select everything beneath that and press Control X or cut whatever you're and if you're on a Mac, I don't know what the shortcut is for cutting, but cut it. OK, uh, so it's on the clipboard, but removed. And this uh, here, the inputs, we're going to want our inputs no matter what state we're currently in, really. So we're going to leave this in the step event itself. Uh, but all of that code that we've just cut, I want you to then go into player state free and paste it. Okay, so all of this stuff will only happen when we are in the free state. Okay, so our movement based on our direction, uh, the collisions, uh, updating our sprite to either be uh, running or standing, and then animating that sprite. Okay, all of that stuff is only going to happen when we're in the free state. Uh, how do we make that happen? Because all we've done is just put it into a script. We're not actually calling that script in any way. Well, what we can do is uh, if we go back to the create event of the player by whatever means, um, at the very, very top here, because um, it's just important, I like to put it at the top, I'm going to write state equals player state free, semicolon. Um, now, I've written the name of a script here, but I'm not actually calling the script. Okay, if I just come back to this script here, you'll see where we've called scripts before with things like player collision. Let's make it bigger again. Uh, where I put player collision, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and that calls uh, the player collision script and player animate sprite, open bracket, close bracket, and that calls the player animate sprite script. Um, but that's because I've put these brackets at the end here. If you put these brackets here, or, or if you've supplied arguments to uh, a script, um, then GameMaker knows it needs to call that script and actually execute its contents. If you write it without the brackets, then you're not actually calling the script, you're just referring to the ex that script itself. So if I now come back to our create event here, where I've written this uh, without writing the brackets, um, all I've said is that state um, is going to equal a reference to that script. Okay, it's not going to call the script, it's not going to run the contents of that script, um, it's just referring to it, which allows us to then tell GameMaker later to execute whatever script is contained in this variable. Very, very useful. Okay, and what we can do is just swap that state between this script, player state free, and any of our other player state scripts. Uh, in this circumstance, that's just player state role. All right. So now that we've set that variable to be that script, how do we call it? Well, if we come back to the player step event, um, million and one ways to get there, I have it open here. Um, so, which is just currently our inputs. If I write script 
underscore execute at the bottom of here. Open bracket, we can then provide the name of the script, which is uh, state. Uh, I guess we know that player state free is in state. And then any arguments we need to supply to that script. We don't have any arguments that we need to supply to any of the scripts we've made so far. So um, I don't need to put any of those in, and I can just close the bracket there, semicolon. So because we know that all is contained in state is a reference to, um, if I go to the create event, player state free, and player state free just contains all the code that we had uh, in the step event before. Um, we can therefore conclude that if we were to run the game, we've got exactly the same game that we had before, okay? <laughs> Absolutely nothing has changed here in terms of how it works, but we've split it up um, so that all of this code is now contained in player state free, and uh, we only want to run that when we are in uh, the state that allows us to move around freely. So now all we need to do is make it so we can get from one state to another state. So underneath um, all of this stuff in our player state free script, um, we need something we can do in the free state to move us from the free state to the rolling state. And for now, that's going to be as simple as pressing a button. Uh, so I'll put a comment here for now that just says change state at the bottom. Um, so we've done everything on a frame and then right at the end of the frame we're going to check to see if we've pressed a button or done some combination of things in the game that allow us to change state. For us that's just going to be if key activate. You'll remember key activate from um, the step event of the player um, as one of the, the keys we defined earlier as the spacebar. And uh, what we're going to do is if that key has been pressed um, I'm going to set state to equal player state, oh sorry, it's need a capital P, player state role, semicolon. And also move distance remaining is going to equal distance role. You remember the value that we set to 52. Um, we're going to set up a new variable to equal that value and Basically, we're going to reduce that value until it hits zero, and that's when we're going to stop rolling. But um, in order to start rolling, we have to set that to a high value. So we're going to set that to be 52. You'll see how that works in a minute. Uh, close the bracket here. But that's all that's necessary is to set state to equal player state roll, because then the next time uh, the step event loops around, um, and we get down to here, script execute state, it's going to execute the roll state, which is currently blank, instead of the free state. So what do we think that will currently do? Uh, since player state role is currently totally blank, what that means is if we run the game, we're able to move around like this normally, and then the moment we press the space bar, the player just freezes and is unable to do anything else. Because we're, we're still getting our inputs and everything, that's still happening in the step event, but then it's executing this script. Uh, which is completely blank, okay, and, and therefore is not never going to do anything else, not animating or doing anything, okay? All right, so the last thing we need to do now is just actually fill out the roll state with what we want to happen to enable us to actually roll. So the first thing I want to do is similar to player state free, um, is calculate where we want to move. Previously in player state free, that was based on whatever our input magnitude and input direction were, but w since rolling is just we just want to roll in one fixed direction we don't want control over which direction we're rolling as we're rolling um we're going to assume that we've already set a direction by facing a particular direction before pressing the roll so whatever direction we were in when we entered the state is going to be the direction that we continue to roll so our movement uh is going to be a bit simpler it's going to be h speed equals length the underscore x um, and then we just provide a length and a direction for how much we want to move horizontally. Uh, that's speed roll, which we know is like 3.0 uh, from here. And in the direction of direction, just whatever direction we're currently in. And v speed is going to be the same but vertical, so it equals length the y, open bracket speed roll, comma, direction. And that's it. All right, so that's going to set us up for moving in a particular direction forever, right? Um, although we haven't committed to that movement itself yet. But 
um, what we want to do is make sure this movement speed eventually ends, and that's what our move distance remaining variable is about. Okay, so I'm going to type move distance remaining again, to, and we're going to set it to equal max. Um, max is a function that returns the biggest of whichever values you put into it. So whatever is bigger out of zero, or move distance remaining minus speed roll because we can assume we've moved speed roll amount in whatever direction okay so we, we've moved three to the right or whatever you know we so we're re removing the distance we've just moved from however much we've got left to move okay um the reason we do a max with that rather than just subtracting it from it is so we make sure that it definitely hits zero and doesn't go to say minus one or whatever i don't think that's really a problem here but it's just you know, decent practice to make sure of that um then i'm going to write var underscore collided equals player collision open bracket close bracket semicolon that's going to call our collision script again as you'll remember from the free state um, but it's going to return the results of that collision into this temporary variable collided. You'll remember we set that up. If I go into, if I middle click on that, uh, come into player collision, you remember we set this variable at the top here, var collision to be false, um, and then collision true and so on, and then it returns it. Um, the re return of underscore collision there will get put into underscore collided here okay um so we know whether or not there was a collision and it's going to put it into this variable we didn't have a need for that in the player state so we just call the script and we don't care what it returns it doesn't return it anywhere but in here i actually care about whether or not we collided uh we won't for this particular episode but i'm setting it up now basically what i'm going to have happen is when we do collide with the wall eventually we're going to have like a bonk effect okay so we hit the wall and then we kind of bounce off of it not necessary right now, we're just going to stop moving when we hit a wall, um, but later we're going to want to know that. So that's why I've written it this way instead of just calling the script by itself. Uh, next we're going to update our sprite um, according to how far into the roll we are. We're going to do it a bit differently to how we uh, animate the sprite in the free steps. I'm going to write update sprite. First of all, we know that the sprite index is going to equal sprite roll. Um, Okay, that variable uh, we set up in the create event that just equals the very name of the sprite. We know it's always going to be that because we're in the roll state. There's no other. There's no other sprite we could ever possibly want to actually be. Okay, um, then var underscore total frames uh, equals sprite underscore get underscore number sprite underscore index close bracket divided by four. You'll remember that line that's just telling us how many um, frames there are in a single direction's worth of animation. Uh, but this next line is a bit different and this is why we're not just calling the player animate sprite script, um, we're doing it a bit differently. As I said before, we wanna make sure there's only like one complete roll across the course of the animation. And in order to simplify this a little bit, I'm actually gonna make a new macro um, called, so if we go to macros here, are all cat's script i'm going to type hash macro uh cardinal underscore duh and that's going to e oh well, it's not you don't put equals in for a macro i forgot but you'll remember in player animate sprite before we have this bar underscore cardinal direction equals round direction 90 i'm going to copy and paste well i'm going to copy this round direction divided by 90 come back into macros and paste that on the end of here without the semicolon, remember. Um, because we're actually going to use this quite a lot throughout the game. Um, and rather than just write this out every time and remembering what it needs to be every time, it's easy to just stick it in a macro. And then we can just write cardinal de everywhere we need to use it. Um, interestingly, at the same time, if you go back to player animate sprite, that means we can now actually remove this line entirely and simply swap the one reference to it here, underscore cardinal direction, uh, with that macro. And we've got exactly the same code because it's just going to put this uh, function here directly into where we put that there, okay? Uh, so now come back to player state role. So to determine what frame we're actually going to show, we're going to write image underscore index equals open bracket cardinal 
de, which you can remember is a number between you know naught and three or naught and four technically, um, determining which uh, directional sprite we actually want to show. Multiplied by underscore total frames. Okay. So that's going to put us at the start of a particular animation because it's either going to be frame zero or frame six or frame 12 or frame 18, right? Then we simply need to add uh, the number between naught and five, which uh, tells us how far along in that particular animation we are. So plus open bracket, open bracket one minus open bracket move distance remaining divided by distance roll close bracket close bracket multiplied by underscore total frames close bracket semicolon let's shrink that down that's quite a long line just so you can see it all at once so we know that move distance remaining is a number between 0 and 52 all right depending how far along the roll we're at distance roll is 52 itself um so this here move distance remaining divided by distance roll simply tells us how far along the roll we are or rather it tells us how much of the roll is left because 52 over 52 would be one or a hundred percent right of the roll left to go and like uh one out of 52 would be like a very small percentage and zero out of 52 would be zero or zero percent right of the roll left to go so if you take that figure and subtract it um from one uh, what that gives us is the inverse, okay? It tells us how far along the roll we actually are because 52 over 52 would be 100% or one. So one minus one would be zero with 0% 0 along the roll. Uh, half of that, like 26 over 52 would be like 0 0.5. One minus 0 0.5 would be 50, uh, 0 0.5, uh, you know, 50% along the way, okay? And zero over 52 would be zero. One minus zero, 100, right? 100%, you know, all the way through it. And then we just multiply that by the total frames, which is like six, right? Um, to, to give us the number of frames uh, that we need to actually add onto image index from the first frame in whatever direction we are um, to give us how far along the roll we should be. It's a very useful method if you want to determine your animation, uh, if you want to make your animation fit uh, the numbers in your game, uh, the distances and speeds in your game, rather than trying to make the distances and speed in your game match whatever sprite you've animated, okay? It's quite cool. Last of all, we just need to make it so we leave this state once uh, the roll is actually finished, okay? So once move distance uh, makes its way to zero, um, we can leave this state. So I'm gonna write a comment, change state at the bottom here. I always tend to do state changing stuff at the bottom of a particular state script. Uh, if move distance remaining uh, less than or equal to zero. We, we actually know it can never be less than zero because of the max statement, but I just like to be extra safe because why not? Uh, open bracket, close bracket, and in the middle here, write state equals player state free, semicolon. Remember, no open bracket, close bracket here, just we will set it to equal the script, not call the script. All right, that is our complete uh, roll state. You'll see, obviously, we've got a warning here that's telling us we're not using underscore collided. As I said, we're going to use that later, so don't worry about that. I'm going to press F5 now. You can see we can move around, and if I press the space bar, we do a complete roll. You can see he finishes one complete loop of the animation because that's determined uh, by how... Um, that, that, that's set to fit no matter how long or how fast uh, the role itself is, which is handy because we can now go into Oplayer, go into the create event, and we can change these values around and it won't um, cause our animation to screw up or not play all of its frames and so on. So I could change this to be, say, 72, have a bit of a longer roll distance. If I just space here, press space, and you see I've got a nice long roll, but he still plays the full complete animation in that direction. Okay, so one mistake I noticed at the end of the video there, and you might have noticed it as well if you have a particularly keen eye, is that this wasn't working quite right. So I've just I've adjusted the, the frame rate to 15 just to sort of show you what the one problem we had was. And you can see if I roll upwards here, did you spot it? The very, very last frame was slightly off and was actually showing the first frame of the next direction in the sprite. 
There's a lot, a lot of ways uh, throughout making this game where this kind of error manages to pop up in lots of different ways. It's one of the um, slight annoyances of trying to do a system like this is uh, handling it manually. You do have to account for a lot of sneaky edge cases you wouldn't otherwise. But you'll notice in every direction here, easier to notice if I roll, roll against a wall because then I'm stationary. The very last frame, and it only happens for a split second, because it's only the very last frame, is wrong. Um, the reason that is, if we come into the player state roll here, is because um, the final destination of this um, being, you know, um, 1 minus 0 here, so 100% times total frames, actually puts us um, on the very next frame. Uh, so if we're uh, on, on the next direction. So if we're here at 0, um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's the six total frames in here, right, uh, in this direction. But if we go from frame um, zero, index zero, and we add six, uh, that puts us on index one, index two, index three, index four, index five, index six. So you see here, and it's only the very last frame because um, before that, if we're at 0.99 or whatever uh, percent, if we're at 99% of the way through, we would still be on like frame uh, 5.99 or whatever, right? Which still works out as this sprite because it gets flawed, I, I think. Um, so only for a very, like a single frame are we on this frame. Um, now we can't just subtract one because then we'd be skipping the first frame or whatever as well. But the way we can fix this is to basically just make sure uh, that value uh, never actually goes um, above uh, total frames minus one. So it never goes, um, uh, in this case, above uh, five, all right? Um, we can do that simply by using a min statement, similar to how we use the max one here, which returns the biggest of the two values. Um, if we wrap this around here, this, this whole section here, because this tells us where we want to start, and then this is just a number between naught and naught and six currently. Uh, but we want it to actually be a number between naught and five. All right. Um, so we can just simply write min here. Open another bracket. Uh, this whole equation, or comma uh, total frames uh, with the capital F minus one. Close bracket. All right. A uh, very simple fix. There might be even simpler fixes, but this is the Simplest one I could think of <laughs> off the bat. Uh, something I hadn't noticed throughout the whole pre-production of this is that uh, little error there with the roll. Uh, but it does exist, and that should fix it. And if we press F5 now, I'm keeping the frame rate really low just so we can see. We see the whole thing go through. Another way to fix it would be to say when you multiply by total frames here, uh, multiply by total frames minus 0.1 or something. But not only is that kind of messy, but it also, um, the, the more you minus it by means technically the last frame uh, gets shown for a short period of time as well. So we don't want that. So we still want to see that, that, that final frame for the same duration as all the others. And this makes sure that that's the case. So we see every frame for the right amount of time it plays at an even speed and doesn't uh, mess up and show us that extra frame at the end there. Okay, so with that fix applied and our frame rate back to normal, um, we've successfully created um, a simple state machine that allows us to differentiate between running around like this and being in a specific state doing a specific action like rolling. You'll notice that when we're rolling, um, you just have to believe me, you, you can't change direction or anything like that. Uh, because the code isn't there. The, the code is in the free state. Very, very useful. Um, allows us to create uh, distinct blocks of code without worrying about all of the code that's in the other states because we just completely ignore it when we are um, in a given state. So when we are in the free state, we ignore what's in the roll state, and when we're in the roll state, we ignore what's in the free state. Um, very, very useful. All right, thanks for that, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you managed to make sense of it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching part four. Of course, there wouldn't be a part four if it weren't for all my lovely patrons, the names of which are scrolling past now. If you want to get access to my videos a week early and you want to get 
access to all the source code and all the cool goodies like that, hop over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs and you'll find all the information about that. In the meanwhile, a uh, big thanks in particular and in no particular order to the following. Bailey Raid, Bowser the Dog, Bertie T, Cabbage Pants, Dakadondago, Darkrider0318, Do What Doobie, Gargoyle Drake, Hanu Kusi, Hare, Hyungjin, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Jason, Christopher King, Leo, Maria Celeste Oliveira Frailing, Max M, Nathan Wilson, Pixel Mush, Relentless Rex, Rene Dam, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Rupinda, Schaefer, Scott Matthews, Samir Nyayalegaglo, Stephen Hagen, T. Lesson, Travis Womack, Tyler Hubble, Victor Stewart, Phil Vertinen, Zephyr Flame, and Zinan May. Thank you all ever so much for your support, and thank you for watching. Catch you all next time.